Alright, because I'm a fucking weirdo, this is the second take. It's so fucking... I just said something and I forgot what I said. So I had this chat with, with this guy just fucking two minutes ago and I was like, Ooh, what? I have to make a video about that. So this is for you, man. Uh, stateside, there are rumors or misconceptions or whatever that is circulating, making it hard to build an OM60X engine. And onions and carrots and shit, we try to stay away from that today and use the word engine, right? So, all engines that are OM601, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6, that are 2 liter, 4 cylinder, 2.5 liter, 5 cylinder, or 3 liter, 6 cylinder, all these engines because there are 2 liter 601s and there are 2 liter 604s. So this is all the 2 liter, 2.5 liter and 3 liter OM60X engines. They have 149 millimeter long rods. All of them. All naturally aspirated engines of the 601, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 that are 2 liter, 2.5 liter, 3 liter have a 26 millimeter wrist pin. All of them. Actually, the 604 that are 2.2 liter also has 149 millimeter rods and 26 millimeter wrist pin. The stateside OM601. I need help from my really, really good friend Rodney at Vanceforce to look this up for me because you have the 2.2 liter 601 in the States and we don't have that. So maybe they also have 149 millimeter rods and 26 millimeter wrist pin. They should have the 26 millimeter wrist pin, but the length of the rod, I don't really know. I know that the crank is the same, the stroke is the same and so on for the 601 2.2 liter, 2 liter and the 604 2.2 liter. So I imagine that the rods are the same. In that case, all naturally aspirated 601, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 have the same rod length and wrist pin diameter. That means that you can use any rods in any engine or you can buy forged rod, rods from me with 26 millimeter wrist pin and put in any naturally aspirated engine you have. For the turbo engines, we have a little bit of difference. The 604 was, was never a turbo engine, so we can disregard the 604 immediately. The 601 was a, available as a turbo engine, but 2.3 liter. So that has a 145 millimeter rod and 28 millimeter wrist pin. So we leave that aside, right? So no 604, no 601 turbo. So all turbo engines, 60X, the 602, 603, 605, and 606, they, are, they all have 149 millimeter rods and 28 millimeter wrist pin. So that means that you can take your 605 or 606 used rods from eBay, turbo rods, and you can put them in your 602 or 603 turbo engine. Direct replacement and a hell of a lot stronger. So it's a cheap, easy upgrade. You can also use the Benz Force Force rods if you're stateside or if you're in the rest of the world, you can hit me up for a message and I'll sort you out. So this is like, you know, the, the missing knowledge because when I spoke to this guy, he had no idea. He, he just wanted to, you know, to see what he could use. And he was even planning on, on having rods manufactured for him because there were no rods for his engines available. But that is not true, as you know now. 
And, you know, it's really destroying the world of fun. That something that is not true circulates that long that it becomes the truth. And, uh, and people tend to use that truth when they are planning ahead. And, you know, it's, it's a shame. It's a shame that this information isn't available out there, but now it is. So, the other fucking topic that I, I guess, this is also like fucking five minutes ago. Uh, yeah, ring gap. This is fucking interesting, you know? So, if you are replacing your rings, we have talked about this in building an engine. And I know I should have made those like 10 episodes with everything, what the fuck, you know? But people don't build engines. So, so it's like, I, I don't really feel the need to explain it in detail because it really doesn't fucking matter. But if you are building an engine, please build your engine. Ordering parts and putting them in your engine is not building an engine. So this guy had a lot of problems, a lot of overfueling, a lot of um, uh, damage due to not building the engine properly, and bore scoring due to the topic we're going to talk about now, ring gap. So first of all, you have to resurface your bore if you replace your rings. That is number fucking one. Keep your bore, keep your rings. Refinish bore, replace rings. You cannot do one of these. It's not fucking gonna happen. And when you are resurfacing your bore and you are replacing your rings, you need to measure the ring gap. And if you don't know how to do that, just give someone your engine and let them build it for you. I mean, there are mega good local companies in every fucking city in the world that builds engines, you know? And you can just ask around, can I be there when you build my engine? Every time you work on my engine, can you give me a call and I can come here? And you can learn from this process and next engine, you know a little bit of what the fuck you're doing and you can build your own engine. But if you can't measure your ring gap, please don't build an engine, please, I beg you. So ring gap is really important and you can Google search the measurements, the different rings, the top ring, middle ring and so on, they have different gaps. and. When you buy rings, they are always too big. And why is that? Why don't they just make a ring that fits? Because they don't know how much you resurfaced your bore. It's fucking simple, isn't it? You know, they don't have a fucking clue. So they make a slightly larger ring. So you can file this fucker down to the correct size. It's really as simple as that. So this is something you have to do. It is not like an option. So make sure, sure your fucking ring gap is good. Okay? Otherwise the ring will squeeze the fucking ends together expand and score your bore minimum trash your ring land probably destroy your fucking engine likely so ring gap is way more important than it looks like and it's boring as fuck to do 
there are small little fucking machines that uh, have a, like rotating shit that you can doot, 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 file your fucking rings on and you don't have that you know so the angle grinder works yes that's good yes the, don't put your fucking fingers in there but it's like an the easy hack you know you, you take your fucking anvil and you put your angle grinder in it with a one millimeter fucking disc and you just turn it on <laughs> fucking crazy and you take your fucking rings it's like 30 seconds a ring but it's hard fucking work when you have six times three amount of rings and it's really fucking boring but you have to do it so ring gap really important make sure you are set and the rods they work what the fuck ever you buy now we know that I see you in three days and then I will have another unhappy customer telling me something that I need to make a video about. Love you all.